Hi and welcome aboard USS Gerald R. Ford, the US Navy's newest and most advanced aircraft carrier. We are currently sailing off the coast of France. We got here with a C2. We got to experience an AAG advanced arresting gear recovery. And later on, I'll get to experience an EMOS launch. But first, let's hear from some of the carrier's uh, top officers on board. The vice uh, commander of the US Second Fleet, the commander of the carrier strike group, as well as the ship's commander. Bon matin, uh, bienvenue uh, aboard the USS Gerald R. Ford, le, le plus capable et plus moderne porte-avions dans la flotte américaine. Je suis Contre-Admiral David Patchell, je suis Canadien et je suis uh, le commandant second de la deuxième flotte. Je vais prendre des questions uh, en anglais uh, aujourd'hui. So, Rear Admiral David Patchell, I'm a Canadian officer and vice commander US Second Fleet. And Second Fleet is the US numbered fleet responsible for overseeing this inaugural Gerald R. Ford deployment. And this is an important deployment. It's showcasing uh, the first new class of carrier introduced in the United States Navy in over 40 years. And not only that, but we've had the opportunity to integrate allies and partners right across the Atlantic. Now demonstrating the United States and the allied commitment to NATO and demonstrating the ability to increase maritime uh, interoperability at sea. And not only that, but reinforcing that transatlantic link, that important bridge between North America and Europe. So Admiral Huffman will give some opening comments and then we're happy to take any questions. Thank you, sir. Uh, good morning, I am Rear Admiral Greg Huffman. I am the commander of the Gerald R. Ford Strike Group. Welcome aboard the Gerald R. Ford. It is wonderful to have you out here. Uh, we are out here embarked on our inaugural deployment of the Gerald R. Ford Strike Group. This is an opportunity for us to embark a, air, a, a complete staff, a strike group staff, an air wing, a destroyer squad and staff, uh, all of our strike group assets, which include a cruiser and destroyers, uh, and then work with allies and partners. Uh, we've been embarked for several months now, uh, operating off of the east coast of the United States and, and now over uh, off the coast of Europe. Uh, and it has been really a phenomenal opportunity for us to explore the capabilities of the Gerald R. Ford uh, bring it into a strike group environment, and then fundamentally operate with allies and partners from the very beginning. So it's called Exercise Silent Wolverine. It uh, involves ships from seven different nations. So from Canada, Denmark, France, uh, Spain, the Netherlands, United States, and Germany, uh, all working together to increase maritime interoperability. So as I mentioned, showcasing the new carrier, uh, for a lot of the NATO nations, having the opportunity to work with the carrier is significant, let alone a brand new carrier like the Ford. Yeah, so this was a fantastic opportunity for us to explore the capabilities of the Ford as part of a strike group, but then also to work with those allies and partners and integrate them completely into the strike group concept. So we were able to change roles and responsibilities within the strike group, allowing each of the allies to take on a different role uh, in terms of air defense or anti-surface warfare, those type of things, and then explore all of the capabilities that the Ford class brings, uh, and then working with those allies and partners from the very beginning. So it was a really uh, fantastic exercise for us. So uh, the Ford has 23 new technologies. Some of the most uh, prominent ones are the, the radar uh, system that we have on board, which is different from the Nimitz class. Uh, and it's more uh, along the lines of an Aegis type of radar system. Uh, and so that brings different capabilities. And when we marry that with our allies and partners, uh, it gives us the opportunity to look at how we can leverage what the Ford class brings uh, and compare that with uh, what the Nimitz class had and then maximize all of those efficiencies. That's, that's one prominent example, I think, especially as we work with our, our uh, you know, allies uh, and how they're gonna leverage their equipment uh, with our equipment. Absolutely impressed with the capability here on board Ford, uh, including the elevators, just phenomenal. And, and even more than that, impressed with the crew. This is a motivated crew. They are ready to respond, they are learning. I mean, they are learning a new carrier each and every day and improving, but just the, the incredible morale here on board the Ford has been impressive from a second fleet perspective. 
Yeah, I would say, uh, I know the weapons elevators have been the topic of a lot of uh, discussion recently over the last couple of years. Uh, they performed fantastically. Uh, we had zero issues with those uh, elevators, and I think if you were to talk to the, the ordnance handling crew, they would say that they are incredibly impressed with what they have. They really like the new setup, uh, and it's very much more efficient than what they're used to uh, in previous uh, classes of ships. So uh, overall, I'd say that is a fantastic story and, uh, and something that's very, very positive. So I would say overall, in the life of the ship, we've done well over 10,000 launches and recoveries on board. So for this particular deployment, I couldn't say exactly how many we did, but we were able to execute uh, a full range of operations uh, in our normal fashion of cyclic operations, where we, we practice how we were going to go and employ the ship. Uh, and we had uh, very few issues at all with the EMALs. So it's, it's very much a, uh, uh, it's still a work in progress and we're getting better at it. Uh, and making improvements all the time, but it is absolutely performing where we need it to be. I'll just say uh, one sort of closing comment then is, I've had the opportunity to visit a number of the Allied ships over the course of, of the week, and uh, impressed with the ship's capabilities, impressed with the sailors, and, and impressed with the camaraderie amongst all the different NATO nations who are out here. Uh, so, you know, NATO's in good hands from a maritime perspective. Uh, it is clear that we are building capability, maintaining capability, and there's just that camaraderie at sea amongst mariners uh, ready to support NATO. So I'm now with uh, Siri, he's a shooter on board uh, the USS Gerald R. Ford. He operates the, the famous EMOLS uh, electromagnetic uh, launch system. So Siri, hi, thanks for welcoming us on board. Hi, I appreciate you coming. It's, uh, it's been awesome having you guys out here. Well, thank you very much. So you're in charge of operating uh, the EMOLS, you're basically the shooter of the aircraft on board. Yes, sir. What does EMOLS bring uh, compared to uh, the old uh, steam catapults? EMOLS allows us to uh, configure each launch uh, a little bit differently. It's a lot easier on the aircraft. We can, we can bring it up to speed a lot slower to put less wear and tear on the aircraft. Um, it also gets rid of steam so that we're able to uh, rely on electricity a lot more. Okay, um, so EMOLS has, uh, at one point when we did our friends and family day cruise, we did about, we had about 10,000 uh, launches. Um, it's been a few months since that, so we definitely have a lot more in, but uh, we're at least up above 10,000 launches. And you have four catapults on board for? Yes, four catapults. And uh, in terms of maintenance on board, are you getting up to speed? Are you like good at uh, maintaining the system on board? Like, is it? Reliable nowadays, the emails. It's a slow process, but we're getting there. I tell you, from from just being out this uh, month and a half, we uh, we've gotten a lot more efficient in fixing our gear, and we've we're, we're getting faster and better at it. And uh, the the French for their future aircraft carrier program, known as the Peng, uh, so they are looking at emails as well. They're likely going to procure it. Like, is that the way to go, in your opinion, for future uh, naval air operations? That's not something that I can really answer, but I can tell you that it's working well for us. And in the future, we're we're definitely going to going to see more of this on our on our future carriers. So, probably. All right, Sir Richards, thank you very much. Yes, sir. Thank you.